game number one on Oxide LE. Spawning. The bottom left hand side of Oxide, it is our Protoss player. In the blue. It's Lulu. And in the top right hand side, in the red, our Zerg player. Baltar. All right, so apparently Lulu is an EU player. So the North American account looks like Bronze 1. I have no idea how good Lulu actually is. So far, the wall looks solid. Baltar, meanwhile. Looks like he's going for a hatch gas pool here. There it is. Hatch the third location. Blocked off by that probe. Most Zergs these days just happy to grab a third. No question about it. No question about it. Yeah. All right. Sorry, let me get some stretches in here. I normally like to take a five-minute break in between series, but uh, they had this one ready to go for us, so I guess we're uh, we're doing it. Gateway, Cyber, second gateway. Second gateway? Second gateway. And Lulu should be able to wall off completely. There it is. Second gate. That's a very wide gap in the wall, though. That is... Is that... Wow. That's... Yeah, Lulu forced to do another little wall off there. Okay, so a very interesting wall from Lulu. But I guess if it works, it works! And Baltar's Natural going to finish up quite soon. Rock and roll. Xerxes in the chat asks, why no nail polish? Uh, I've been trying to cut some costs the last couple weeks. Last couple months, honestly. Uh, I've only been able to get my nails done twice. Uh, so far this this year? Since the summer, at least. And so I've been trying to... Trying to be a little, little bit more responsible with my spending. So no nail polish for me. I could buy it and do it myself, I know. It looks terrible when that happens. I still have my toenail polish on from uh, from a month ago. Definitely should take that off soon. Oof. Anyhow, no third yet for our Zerg player. Lulu just kind of blocking that off with the probe right now. By the way, Jimmy M.E., welcome to the stream, Jimmy. Uh, interesting, the lings for Baltar not picking off that... There it is. I was going to say, picking off that probe. <laughs> probe goes down, but no third base is a little bit sus this early. The probe, unfortunately, did not get a bead on this lair tech. So, the probe has no idea that the lair tech is on the way. Two base lair. Third base going down there. Uh, no Roach Warren yet, though, for Baltar. Two gases taken, no third, no fourth gas. This is a very strange build order. Very strange. Ling's getting picked off by these stalkers. One, two, and three. Shouldn't get anything done. Pretty poor control from Baltar here, but that's all right. Oh, gets a stalker, and wow, does get some Ling's in. That's surprising. Well worth it to get the full scout. The bad news is, of course, there's no real information here that he couldn't have gotten just from sitting at the main base. Uh, sitting at the natural, rather. Robo is the tech of choice from Lulu. And three stalkers out early. Yeah, likely mean it's not going to be like a charge lot of mortal play. Not going to be going for Glaive to Depths here. It is just going to be Blink Stalkers with a Warp Prism. Lulu going full creator on us here. Baltar grabs gas three and four and Aspire. Now, that's the uh, gases have been taken a little bit late for Baltar. Usually you want to go... Um, yeah, usually when you get your gas a little bit earlier than that. And he's going to have to make up for it by grabbing gas number five pretty quick here. And may even Maynard some drones over uh, to saturate up the main, or the, the main, pardon me, the naturals gases uh, before, before too long. Drones currently queued to the third, should go queued over to the, uh, to the natural location. The spire is already down. Again, an unspotted spire from Baltar, Lulu, in the dark about this tech. Lulu's got something flying in the air himself, though, as the game comes across. Ugh. Warp Prism. 
Heading up into the main, not spotted yet by Baltar. No overlords down south of the base, so Zerg players. Don't just put an overlord further south. Put an overlord here as well, just to see if there's a warp prism coming into your main. Uh, Lulu, I, I assume, going to warp in some maybe zealots? Stalkers? I don't know. There's no upgrades, so maybe just a little zealot run by into the main here. As uh, Baltar, this is banking a lot of gas for those uh, for those mutilisks. Spires finished up plus one on the way. Should see seven or eight mutas cranked out very quickly here. There's plenty of larva, and there it is. Ooh, all the larva getting used for lings instead. Okay, that's interesting. More drones getting made also. Uh, the longer that Baltar waits to make mutilisks, the, the less effective the mutilisk transition is going to be. Uh, Warp Prism drops those Zealots in the main, going straight for the Queen. Of course, the Lynx can get a good surface area on the Zealots. That's going to force Lulu out and... Oh, no. Wow, okay. Zealots going to keep the... Pardon me. Zealots going to stay alive for a lot longer than you ever think they ever should. Stalkers instead of Zealots warped in from Lulu. An odd choice, considering it's all Ling Queen on the map right now. And a probe misrallied up to the main. A second probe misrallied up to the main. A third probe misrallied up to the main. Oh, God. Is there a nexus with a bad rally point? Nope, just a couple, just a couple probes. Just, just... Whoa. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Baltar sees the probe. I don't know how Baltar... Oh, the Overlord. Oh my god. The Overlord sees the probe, but not the pile... Oh my god. Are you kidding me right now? I just saw something cute over there. Please be Lings. Lings queued up into the main. They're going to see this pylon. Oh my god, they're drawn away. The Overlord finally sees the pylon, though. And now Baltar knows that there's a pylon in his main. The Warp Prism is not the only threat. The Mutalisks are not fighting the Warp Prism. There we go, finally. Getting in on the Warp Prism. The Warp Prism will go down, but there is the ability to warp into the main base. More Stalkers, Lulu? I don't think so. Only four gates for Lulu. So Lulu doesn't quite have enough gates uh, to really put that pressure on. This pylon's cute, but it's not doing much. Ling's finally dispatched to dispatch the probe and the pylon. There's the infestation pit. Hive tech on the way, and wow, already plus two flyer attack coming out. Now, Baltar has given Lulu plenty of time to prep for these mutalisks. You can see shield batteries coming in numerously at the third base. Stalkers being warped in in lieu of zealots and immortals. And it's going to be Blink Stalker Immortal out of Lulu once Blink is researched, which won't be for a while because there's no Twilight Council. Okay. Mutalisks shouldn't catch Lulu by surprise here, but Mutalisks can always be tough to rotate around with, and uh, those rotations can be very difficult. Even if you know they're coming. Well, these Mutas should go ahead and edge on in, yeah. Triple Photon Cannon, but... Woo, focus on the Pylon. Should be enough to drive that away. Really good defense there. From Lulu. Mutal is still trying to rotate around, picking off some warping in stalkers, but they can't engage with his stalker count from Lulu. Just too high. Now, Lulu has no upgrades for those stalkers. Lulu built two forges earlier, but they're not spinning yet. Not spinning yet for uh, for Lulu. So very early investiture in the upgrades, and now no upgrades going to happen. In fact, Lulu's pretty much going to ignore those. Um, Lulu's pretty much going to ignore those, and uh, just go straight for triple Stargate to respond to the Mutalisk play. And now Lulu is on the map and on the warpath. One Overlord going down. Second and third Overlord is probably going to get picked off as well. Well, Mutalisks are in to try and deal with this. Unfortunately, the Stalker count is huge. The Mutalisks do get the the, uh, the Warp Prism and one Immortal, but unfortunately, they're not able to snipe. Well, one more Immortal! Oh, one more Immortal goes down. 
But the iron price has been paid by every single one of those mutas. And uh, despite getting a warp prism and three immortals here, the stalker count's still pretty high. Now the links will get decent surface area, but these stalkers are clumped up like zebras on the on the uh, savannah. So they're going to be able to buy themselves plenty of time. Forces a recall, of course, out of Lulu, which is not that bad. The links do save uh, Baltar and give Baltar a little bit more time to come up with another, uh, another pressure. The overlords from Baltar, by the way, should be able to see... What's going on in the main base? They're choosing not to for some reason, uh, which is pretty bad news, we'll be honest. Uh, they, they, the Baltor's Overlord needs to get in and see... Oh, shit. Seeing three Phoenix should be a giveaway right now. Again, Platinum Game. Can't assume these players have GM-level game knowledge and map awareness, but seeing three Phoenix should be a good indicator, and Baltor really should get this Overlord in and see what's going on. Let's take a look at Baltar's vision and see what Baltar's doing. Okay, Baltar not really paying much attention to scouting right now. Maybe not noticing that the Overlord's getting picked off by those Phoenix, the bottom side of the map. In fact, Baltar just kind of chilling. Checking these bases. Gets the inject down. Hanging out. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Lulu's going to get in here. We'll go back to everybody's vision and see what's going on. Uh, nice lifts on some of these Hydras here. Drones pulled off the line. This is a pretty decent threat from Lulu. Baltar has not built any more uh, lings behind this. The Hydra, the Hydra core is still fairly strong. Ten drones have gone down. That will put Baltar behind on drones. But there are still plenty of stalkers here. And behind on drones is not enough to lose a game. But all the stalkers at the third base almost certainly are. Uh, Lings flooding forward one by one. Again, getting decent surface area on the stalkers. Some zealots would not be the worst thing in the world to mix in to this composition. Fascinating. Uh, it seems like these players uh, really are focused on sort of single unit compositions. It seems across all three races. We have seen uh, players really just like, okay, I'm going to go all rote. Well, our Zerg, Zerg games, I guess, have been a bit of an exception. But Terran and Protoss have all sort of been like, all right, we're going to go all Stalker and just go. I'm going to build six Colossi and just go. I'm going to build 38 Lings, and then when they die, I'm going to build 38 Mutas, and then I'm going to build 38 Hydras. Um, and uh, I guess in this case, only the Diversified Man shall pass. Uh, it, it seems as though diversification of armies is going to be a huge problem for some of these players to deal with. Which is interesting, because it's not usually something we think about uh, when we're watching pro players. The pro players are so good at understanding how to diversify their army and slipping in, you know. If you're going to go for, for, for stalker pressure, that's fine, but have some zealots, have some archons ready to go in case you get surrounded by lings. Uh, but those little, micro, those little um, army composition mistakes are really interesting to see. In the uh, in the Platinum Heroes at, in, in the Platinum Heroes atmosphere, I can't, what's the word I'm looking for? In the Platinum Heroes oeuvre, in their their biosphere, in their food chain. In their, I can't think of the right word. Okay. With these Platinum Heroes players, 109 armies applying now to 68. Uh, Extend Thermal Lance on the way. Two Colossi are out, but Hydralisks can do a pretty decent job. Uh, Hydralisk range has been researched, by the way, so these Hydralisks are going to be very uh, muscly boys right now, able to throw those grooved spines quite far. Ling's going forward here. Phoenix in the back won't be able to lift too much up because, of course, the Hydras are here. Shield battery overcharge trying to save the day. Unfortunately, the focus... Oh, the shield battery was healing up the Stalkers instead of the Colossus, and both Colossi going to fall instantaneously. Oh, no. Not going to be enough, and that's going to depower the gate, the Colossus. No more Colossi for Lulu. Baltar's army running rampant in the natural, and that is it, boys and germs. Baltar grabs game number one. Our Zerg player out in front. And here we go, spawning in the top right-hand side of Juggernauta LE. It's our red Protoss player. Lulu. And their opponent in the bottom left hand side in the blue. It's our Zerg player. Baltar. Baltar is definitely a wizard name. I'm not, not saying he's a wizard. 
I'm saying it's a wizard name. Uh, no question. Baltar is casting some spells and hoping that he can grab a second game win. Uh, going 2-0 into the semifinals would be the dream. By the way, speaking of semifinals, our semifinals are all set. Orko and Poak in the first semifinal here. Our random boy Poak going to try his skills. And in the bottom half of the bracket, uh, Miko has defeated Neat 2-0, which means that uh, the winner of this series goes on to face Miko in the semifinals. And that will be our next game that we'll be showing uh, after a short break. Fun fact, uh, Miko is the name of uh, an antagonist character from a webcomic about Dungeons and Dragons that I used to read when I was in high school and is still being published today. First person in chat to name that webcomic that featured Miko as an antagonist in the early days wins, I don't know, my love and support, but good, good webcomic. Speaking of love and support, Pylon Man with a sub. Pylon Man, welcome to the Crate Crate. I'm glad you're enjoying Platinum Heroes. And Cargath TV. Cargath, big World of Warcraft fan, must be. Must be. Welcome to the stream. It's so good to have you. All right, all right. Twilight Council opener here for Lulu. So a little bit different than the last game. The wall a little bit more uh, aptly built this time. And look at that. Somebody has just given some money to the prize pool. Double ought not. I think that was you. Guys, I am pleased to announce that we have finally, fully funded Platinum Heroes number seven. Congratulations, guys. And thank you all for your support of this very cool, totally legal tournament series. Isn't it funny that if you call something totally legal, it immediately sounds suspicious? Like 100% suspicious? <laughs> Speaking of 100% suspicious, Lulu going Dark Shrine. Now, the bad news is that Baltar has two Overlords in position to scout this out. And the Overlord should be moving in here any second. Around the three-minute mark, three-and-a-half-minute mark, really when you want to send those Overlords in. And uh, ooh, Stalker here to drive this Overlord away from the south side. Lulu trying to keep that Dark Shrine secret. Trying to keep it safe. Natural is down for Lulu Probe's long distance mining here. Baltar has no reason to suspect there's a dark shrine yet. And if he doesn't get any spore crawlers down, he's giving me a lot of trouble. But look at that. As soon as I say it, spores go down. Wow. Baltar is clearly a wizard who has cast a, a time warp spell. Who finds himself two minutes in the future listening to my commentary. And watching a stream. Beautiful, beautiful work here from Baltar. Uh, he's going to get through here. No additional... Oh, additional warp into the backside here. But the first Stalker is going to go down. This is, again, a big flood of lings from Baltar, who really loves his early aggression. Oh, the Stalker just slightly out of position here. And this could be a very quick and dirty ending to our first... Or our last quarterfinal game as 10 lings go down. The last Stalker goes down. And Lulu goes down as well. Baltar, our Zerg, grabbing the game.